Hey guys, what is up and now welcome you to another episode of League of Myths. A very big thank you to each and every one of you for the overwhelming support that I received on the first episode. And with all that being said, I'm sure you guys want to dive straight into this episode, so without any further ado, jumping straight to the first myth. This myth submitted by Yagnon98 is, what happens if LeBlanc uses her W two times in a row and then follows it up with a flash while Vi is ulting her and then goes back to her starting point? The main curiosity with this myth is what happens with Vi's ultimates. Will she actually follow the LeBlanc back to her original spot, pretty much going the complete opposite way out of nowhere, or will she simply cancel out? So in order to test this, we did exactly that. The LeBlanc, as I ulti her, uses her W, uses her ulti's W, flashes, and then W's back to her original spot, and the Vi instantly follows her back to the first spot. So clearly this method does not work to get out of Vi's ultimate. Now onto the second myth submitted by Mr. Soul Adder. He pretty much asked us what happens to Cogmas and Karthus' passive once they are in York ulti. Will it still proc after the York ulti is finished on them? So naturally, since Karthus and Cogma both have a passive that procs upon death and York's ulti brings people back from the dead, what actually does happen? Well, as the York ultis meet with Karthus, I walk in to the enemy base, I die instantly, the York ulti pops, I die once more, and then my Karthus passive gets popped. And of course the second test case with Cogma, the exact same principles. As I get York ulti, I am going to walk straight into the fountain laser and I'm going to take a lot of damage, die in a matter of seconds, twice, but the second time my passive once again procs. So this suggests that once the York ulti is finished, whether you die from it or it just simply wears out, the passives of the two champions will proc. And now making our way to the third myth submitted by my friend Rarar, who's always helping me make these videos. Can Blitz pull and flash backwards to pull farther back? We also ended up testing another scenario extremely similar to this that I'll mention as the video goes on. Before in League of Legends, you were actually able to use your Blitz pull and then flash backwards and it will pull you all the way back to where Blitz flashed. But the question is, does that still work? And as you can see here, just as Blitz pulls me and flashes backwards, I do not end up going to where he flashed. Another scenario that is extremely similar that was submitted by a viewer is, if Blitz pulls just as he dies and then pops revive, will he pull them to the tower? And judging from this, that is of course not the case, but for a split second, you are able to see Blitz's hand all the way from you to the fountain. And before we go on to the next myth, I want to show you guys some funny bloopers. Don't forget, you have passive. Okay, nice, nice. Oh. Hello? I didn't think that would kill me. Oh. <laughs> I told you. I told you. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, and jumping to the fourth myth. Can you get a pentakill on the Twisted Tree Line map, which, if you don't know, is a 3v3 map? And of course, a pentakill requiring five consecutive kills. This one is submitted by Wiley Way. Alright, so to test this one, there's of course only one way. Have three people on the enemy team take revive. So I decided to play Lee Sin to test out this myth and just to get to the fountain, just to ensure that when they do revive, they can get back to me right away, I decided to queue into their base. So this one was actually quite difficult to do because the minions did end up spawning and just completely surrounding me. But regardless, I ended up getting the first kill onto Sona, actually popped revive, came back straight to me, killed Teemo, that's a double kill, got the Hecarim as the Teemo ended up reviving, that's a triple kill, went straight for the Sona as the minions are just completely surrounding me, barely able to pick up the kill on her as a quadra so far, and finally, just before the minions finally kill me, I get Teemo, and indeed, a pentakill is possible on the Twisted Tree line. And finally, myth number 5. This one is quite a complicated one, but the myth is, can Nocturne follow Zed's ultimate's shadow with his own ultimate across the map? Submitted by Gustav Fear. So don't forget that Zed's shadow range on his ultimate has no range to swap between. So for this one, I ended up putting a ward down in the bottom lane. As I LTTF, I teleport straight to the bottom lane that Nocturne is waiting. My Banshees cancels out Nocturne's ultimate, the darkness part, and as he's ulting straight at me, I pop my R once more, teleport back to the top of the map, and clearly the Nocturne did not follow. Alright guys, that unfortunately marks the end of episode number 2 of League of Myths. Thank you to each and every one of you for the great support once again that I am receiving for this new series. So that being said, please throw in a like if you did enjoy this one. Also for the next episode, I will be taking a few myth suggestions off of my Twitter account. So if you want to have a chance to have your myth and name featured in the next episode, follow me on my Twitter, RedMercyLOL, and tweet at me saying a myth. But I will also be picking a few myths from the comments underneath this video. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you next time. Peace.